A lot of people hear the terms indie games, double A, and triple A games thrown around casually. But what do they mean actually on a practical level? Especially if you yourself want to be a game developer or if you're just curious about the topic. In today's video, I will help you understand each one of these by understanding the difference between them, their pros and cons, and why certain type of development is more appealing than others. We're gonna start with indie games. First of all, believe it or not, but indie games over the years have carved out a significant niche in the gaming market. This becomes especially evident on platforms like Steam, where they represent about 40% of all units sold. And I would argue that this is due to the community that grows around the development of the journey of these indie games because in a lot of cases, indie devs document their progress on social media, like YouTube, Twitter, and so on. But generally speaking, in a lot of cases, the gaming community supports and consumes more indie games because they are just amazing and especially fun to play. The interesting thing is that, despite the success in terms of volume and numbers, as I just mentioned, indie games typically operate on smaller budgets and are developed by smaller teams compared to their mainstream counterparts. And by this, I mean AA and AAA video games. A lot of us might think that lack of developers compared to the other categories of the game development field is a bad thing due to maybe scale limitation or lack of convenience in some areas. However, surprisingly enough, it does not hinder their impact. On the contrary, it often serves as a catalyst for creativity in the stagnant game development scene in the AAA market, especially in recent years, and you have probably heard, but a lot of people are complaining about lack of creativity. God forbid they create a new IP or try new things because it is really hard and it comes at a cost. Obviously, I'm not saying this is the fault of developers, but at the AAA level, it comes at a high cost that only a few are willing to pay, which I will delve into later. I would say that the exploration and creativity is the kryptonite of large game studios these days, at least from what we can see unless it is necessary and less risky. That's why many people are tired of seeing the same games in the same franchise. But this is where the indie game sector thrives. Indie devs focus on innovation and exploring new concepts and new niche markets that might not attract the larger, more commercially driven entities. You know, like EA, Capcom, Microsoft, Sony, and the others. A good example of this would be games like Celeste, and Undertale. You can easily notice the difference in gameplay mechanics and the compelling narratives. For example, Celeste uses tight platforming mechanics and good storytelling to explore themes of mental illness, while Undertale offers players choices that significantly affect the outcome of the game, wrapped in a quirky and beloved pixel art style, which is very interesting. These games attract new people and bring, I would say, a fresh air to the game development industry by offering experiences that challenge the norms of traditional game development. And this is the case, I think, because they are free to do whatever they like when it comes to artistic expression and they can present themselves in different visual styles over the polished and spectacle of bigger games that we can all see. Many successful indie games actually came from first-time developers or those who just have a couple of years of experience, which speaks volume about quality and the number of games that are actually good compared to bigger games in the AA or AAA video game market, in which you don't often see a video game that you can call bad when it comes to visual quality, gameplay, or some aspects that most indie game developers suffer from due to lack of resources and experience. On the other hand, I would say we have, on the extreme end of the spectrum, we have AAA video games like The Witcher 3, for example, by CD Projekt Red, or Skyrim by Bethesda Game Studios, that I can comfortably say had a significant impact on the gaming industry due to their massive budgets and extensive teams. In a nutshell, these games dominate in terms of revenue, visibility, in addition to innovation. But you might say, hold on. 
didn't you just say AAA games are not innovative enough? Well, yes, I did. But not every big game is a carbon copy of the next game. At least the first game in the franchise brings new ideas and new concepts that players can enjoy and developers can admire. In contrast, indie developers have a lot of room of wiggle to move around without serious consequences in comparison. And from time to time, we see video games that indie devs can only dream of like Elder Ring, Red Dead Redemption, Cyberpunk in addition to others. The Witcher 3, for example, achieved critical acclaim and commercial success, selling only 50 million copies. I'm kidding, that's insanely high. It features things like indie devs can only dream about, like an open world environment with richly detailed graphics, a complex narrative with branching parts, and a deeply immersive experience through a combination of combat, exploration, and decision making. And generally speaking, the game was praised for its production quality, which is obvious, in addition to art design and world building, among many other things, which I think set a new standard for RPGs. But that didn't come from thin air. CD Projekt Red's approach involved years of development and a considerable budget, which indie developers can't afford in all honesty, and this allowed them to create a world filled with realistic character interactions and intricate storytelling. And from looking at the indie market and the AAA market on the other hand, you will notice something that I think we can all agree on, which is that indie games are all over the place. You can find a ton of bad games, a lot of good ones, and sometimes masterpieces in the indie market. On the other hand, we can notice that there is consistency of high quality and polish when it comes to AAA games. Simply because the stakes are high and big studios, now there is a lot to expect from them in their competitive industry. And some people might argue that the worst looking AAA video game can be considered good looking or high quality if it is an indie game. Between indie game developers and AAA game development, there is a sweet spot that nobody seems to talk about as much, which is AA game studios. With bigger teams and more resources and experience compared to indie studios, AA game developers can make better games while still maintaining creativity and coming up with great games when it comes to visuals, gameplay, and story. In a lot of cases, you can't make a difference between AAA and AA games unless you pay close attention, especially to the studio behind the game. I might be wrong, but I think AA game development is usually the next step for indie developers after they become successful or AAA veterans who venture off making their own games after they had a lot of experience in the industry. AA games such as Life is Strange by Don't Nod Entertainment and A Plague Tale Innocence by Asobu Studio find themselves in a unique position within the game development industry. They are developed with budgets and team sizes that exceed those of indie games but are modest compared to the lavish AAA productions. This middle ground, I think, allows AA game developers to enhance the quality of the graphics, sound, and the overall production values without the immense financial pressures faced by AAA titles. And I believe this becomes even more true, especially when you consider publishers, investors, and obviously the pressure of the community because they have a lot to lose. And the worst thing I think is to balance things between the community and the investors and the publishers, which is really hard, I have to be honest. So with AA game development, they don't have all that pressure, which gives them the opportunity to leverage their resources to focus on a balanced approach. And in this approach, they can maintain high quality production values, at the same time, they can be still innovative with less restrictions. Especially when it comes to gameplay, style of the game, I mean the visuals, while still exploring themes and narratives that might not be pursued by larger AAA games due to perceived financial risks, because obviously the investors and shareholders don't want any risks that can threaten their bottom line. I'm not sure, but I can only speculate that the market is largely split between indie developers and AAA game developers without a lot of room for AA development. But as I said before, I can only speculate. And now let's talk about some numbers. Usually the team size of indie developers is around 10 at best, sometimes less, with a considerable number of developers with only one or two developers. 
AA developers I think are anywhere between 10 to 100 people depending on the size and the scope of the project. And when it comes to AAA developers, it is usually in the hundreds. Usually a team of 100 or 150 developers is considered small for such projects. And for example, with God of War 2018, it involved a team of 300 developers and artists at Sony Santa Monica Studios. Now, talking about budgets, for indie games, budgets can range typically from a few thousand to around one million dollars. And for AA game studios, budgets can range, generally speaking, between one million to twenty million dollars, though this can vary based on the project's scope. For example, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice by Ninja Theory had a development budget of approximately ten million dollars. And when it comes to AAA game projects, budgets can often exceed $50 million, with some of the biggest titles reaching up to $200 million or more. For example, Grand Theft Auto V or GTI V by Rockstar Games had a development and marketing budget that exceeded $265 million, making it one of the most expensive games that were ever developed. And there you have it guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.